to practice that we may glorify you and do um, good to others. Father, bless the message today as yes. Jim uh, preaches. Amen. And bless this music as we're practicing. <laughs> For in Christ's name I pray this. Amen. 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 Okay, be honest. <laughs> Keeping Amen. it real. All right, let's praise the Lord. My Redeemer lives. My, re right. my Redeemer right. lives. What's the name of your Redeemer? His love is covered my sin. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. My pain is healed of His name. I believe. Give myself away, so 
Amen. Thank you. Our life is not our own because we've been bought with a price. This precious blood. He owns us now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wow. Yes. Yes. See, Ron, remember last week, Nick was uncomfortable with me if I sent himself? God set you up, man. You did a good job, though. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Ron. Right. Amen. Let's open a word of prayer. Let's come before God. Get on my knees. Well, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. I, Lord, I thank you for another Sunday, another day. As the scripture says, this is a day that the Lord has made. We learned about that in a few few weeks ago. Uh, I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's a day. This is not the day that I'm sure he was talking about at that time, the day that we're going to look forward to you coming back, but it is another day that you've given us. So, Lord, we anticipate what you're going to do with us today. Amen. Lord, we give you honor and we give you glory in all you do. We thank you for your love for us that never fails, your thoughts that are always towards us. Now, Lord, I pray you take our hearts and you form them and, 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 and make them more usable, pliable for your good work. And give us appreciation for all you've done and all you'll do. May we learn something, Holy Spirit. Breathe on this word. May it become life to us right now. We'll thank you for these things. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 We're back in the book of Acts. You know, uh, I was promising some tricks this week. I don't have it. Uh -oh. So those are things. All I have is the word Amen. that was good last week. I mean, those guys were here, wasn't it? Danny ministered really well with, with doing the his illusions. <clears throat> um, I thought that was the Holy Spirit always brings things His way and I thought that the song that was in it I didn't talk to these guys about the, the song that that uh, that they were singing this week I didn't ask them to sing that song but one thing I will say to you this week is that I know the Holy Spirit arranges things for us arranges things in a certain way and I, I believe this message, this word really is about giving ourselves away. We're going to see that. You know, we talked, just to give you a little bit of background, a few weeks ago, we looked at Acts chapter 9. And in Acts chapter 9, it finishes up, the first part was Paul. Then it finishes up the last few verses with Peter doing some pretty incredible miracles. And I can think about Peter being a, a preacher myself, how, how Peter must have felt. Peter must have felt, you know what, this is just what I do. I go around, I got a gift, I heal people, God tells me, and he did some miraculous healings. Two miraculous healings, one from death, and another one, he, he changed a person's life that needed to be healed. And, and so now he was thinking, man, pretty much this is what I do. Acts chapter 10, God's going to reveal some things that are missing in Peter's uh, life. So let's look at that. Look at your papers, if you have that paper there before you. You guys all have... Uh, papers there right here Miss Kathy has some okay here's one for you you gotta share no I gotta give this to you right now let me get the word here okay. give this to you I'm gonna do it the, the way that I like to do it anyway Acts chapter 10 this is one thing I missed is this here in the swish of the papers? I gotta get us some Bibles so that we can go through. I remember back in the day, the old days. <laughs> you know, I come to church and the pastor say, turn to a book of the Bible, and for just a few moments, it was just like the heavenly winds coming out. Everybody pulled their Bibles. Now you guys got phones. Some of you guys go, get yeah, Siri, Acts chapter 10, and Siri goes to it. <laughs> Acts chapter 10, verse 1, it says, In Caesarea there lived a Roman officer named Cornelius, who was the captain of the Italian regiment. He was a devoted, God-fearing man, as was everyone in his household. He gave generously to, generously to the poor and prayed regularly to God. Wow, I love this about this guy. So here's this guy. We're in the city. Uh, where Cornelius lived and Cornelius 
It says some things about him. I love this about him. He says he was he was devoted. The word devoted means having or showing deep religious feeling or commitment. Totally committed to a cause or a belief. So the scripture says he was devoted. And then it says the next thing about Cornelius is that he gave to the poor. In Proverbs uh, nineteen seventeen, the New Living Translation reads like this: If you help the poor, you're lending to the Lord, and He will repay you. Notice again, we see about Cornelius. He had a good heart. He was a good person. He gave to the poor, but get this: Cornelius was not saved. And it's a heavy thing to think about this. I know a lot of good people in the world, people who give way more money than I make in a lifetime to pour into great causes, to fixing things. You run into them, they do good. I, 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 my wife and I, well, my wife has some friends, I'll just call them her friends, and, and they're acquaintances for me by that, by that way, and I, I, there's some good things that they do. However, their life is not a life of salvation. They haven't given their life to Christ. Cornelius, God saw this in Cornelius. And God had Paul, appointed Paul to go to see Cornelius. Let's look at the next few verses. Here's what it says here. Well, let me talk about salvation first of all, because I, you said, man, some of you may be struggling with what I said right now. The Cornelius, it said he was, a, he was devoted to God. So he saw God, he knew God, he was, he, 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 he uh, Prayed every day. He said, well, how can the guy that prays every day not be saved? Cornelius had decided, because in that land where, where he lived, where all the Romans lived and, and such, they served in that area a lot of gods. And, but Cornelius said, I'm going to serve the God of the Jews. I've seen him do some work. I want to serve the God of the Jews. And I like what happens. But here's what the scripture says. In Romans, a scripture that many of you are probably familiar with, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made until salvation. In John three sixteen and in 17, the new, I mean, the new King James Version says this, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son, as Jesus Christ, to condemn the world, but, the, but that the world, through Him, might be saved. Mm-hmm. See, I go into, as a hospice chaplain, I go into a lot of homes. And there are a lot of people that are, I'm not talking about, Reformed Jews. I'm talking about strict Judaism. Some of them I've told you before will stop me and say, okay, if you're going to pray, don't pray in the name of Jesus because he was just a man. They go and they do the regular prayers. They have their prayers three times a day. You might have, I might hear the story. I was going on my first and only trip to Jerusalem. It was a pastor's trip. You know, in the in the nineties, right before I took over my first church, and I was uh, I, I had just taken over the first church. I take that back. I had just taken over the church, and and the church decided me to send me on this pastor's trip to Jerusalem. I'm on the plane, and during that time, I'll tell you something. There was a a lot of planes that were going down, planes being hijacked and and such. And I tried to be cool. It's my longest trip ever that I've been. I've been in places across the United States before and, and, and to, uh, to Hawaii and, and things like that. But I'd never been on a trip for over 10 hours. This was a 15-hour trip or something like that. And I'm on the plane. And, I'm, and in the back of my mind, I'm seeing people get on the plane like, uh-oh, what am I going to do if I'm going down? And I, got, I didn't say to anybody, but I was a little bit nervous. So we're in the plane, and, and we had just got to New York. And, and in New York, all these different kind of people came on, people that I weren't used to. And I was hearing languages in the background that I didn't know. It wasn't Spanish. I know a little Spanish. It wasn't, wasn't, I, was, I was unfamiliar with these people. And all of a sudden, 
We were in the plane, we we're taking off, and now we're over, in my mind, the most treacherous part of the trip because we were crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Oh. I mean, there ain't nothing but water down there. Deep water. You know, wondering how far is the Bermuda Triangle away because some weird stuff happens in the Bermuda Triangle. I don't know where I'm at. All I know is I'm on my way to Jerusalem. And all of a sudden, about 12 o'clock, these guys get up. And my heart's going like this. I'm going, oh my gosh, is this it? And they're walking towards the exit door. You know, they have the aisle seat, big aisle seat, big plane. I'm going, oh man, the guy's going to open the door. We're going to get sucked out. <laughs> they got up from all different parts of the plane. They all were wearing black. They all had long beards. They were Jewish men, and they were coming to pray. Pray three times a day. But it's a shame as far as prayer goes. But they're not saved. God writes how we get to be saved. The Bible says that salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. Recognizing Him as our Lord and our Savior. Recognizing His broken body and His spilled blood that was given for us. An atonement for us. That's why Cornelius, in this story, he's not saved. He's a good man, but not saved. But God saw his heart, just as God sees the hearts of all of us. And this is where the thing that I can only do as a pastor, all I can do is give the word. I, I can pray for you and trust God, but only God sees the heart. And God saw in the Cornelius' heart in his life, and God said, I hear your prayers. Let's take out the next portion of, the, of our passage. Here we go. Verse 3. Um, one afternoon about 3 o'clock sorry one afternoon about 3 o'clock he had a vision which he saw an angel of God coming to him Cornelius the angel said Cornelius stared at him in terror what is it sir he asked the angel and the angel replied your prayers and your gifts to the poor have been received by God Oh, I love that portion first. Let me just stop there. I didn't plan to share this. But you know, when we give, when we do things, we give our tithes and offerings. I try to share this so often. When we give to people who are less fortunate or maybe who are the same as us but are going through something, we don't really give to them. We give to, we're giving to God. Everything we do, we're giving to God. God said, it's the angel, by, the, by this messenger, this angel said that to Cornelius. He says, now the angel says in verse 5, now send some men to Joppa and summons a man named Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon a tanner who lived near the seashore. As soon as the angel was gone, Cornelius called two of his household servants, a devout soldier, one of his personal attendants. He told them what had happened and sent them off to Joppa. I love this. God saw with Simon, I mean, saw uh, Cornelius' heart. And God took care of it. And God said, there's a way. I'm going to send someone to explain to you salvation. Knowing the heart of him, that if you, if you heard the word, you're going to give your life to Christ. You're going to know, I want you to be in heaven with me. Whenever you're at a place, I don't care where you are, if you have someone that's in the Word of God with you, teaching you, sharing the Word of God, knowing that God wants to add to your life, He wants to sure up your salvation, that you can live your life here on earth in preparation to spend eternity with Him. That's the love of God. He knows what's going on. Sometimes I, I, I experienced this here recently over Thanksgiving uh, during Thanksgiving, seeing God at work, answering even some of my prayers in my own family, seeing them. And, and I, I honestly, I heard a whisper from God just based on some of the comments that went on during our Thanksgiving celebration. Jim, I got this. I'm at work. I see. I know the depth of the person's heart. I know the buttons to push. And there's hope. All you and I have to do is have the same hope on the other side and and pray and seek God for that person. That person. Let's go to verse 9. The next day, as Cornelius 
uh, as Cornelius' messengers were nearing the town, Peter went up to the flat roof to pray. It was about noon, so it's the second time they prayed during the day. And as he was and he was hungry. But while a meal was being prepared, he fell into a trance. He saw the sky open, and something like a large sheet was let down by its four corners. In the sheet were all sorts of animals, reptiles, and birds. And then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter, kill, and eat them. No, Lord, Peter declined. I'm sorry, declared. I have never eaten anything that our Jewish laws have declared impure and unclean. But the voice spoke again. Do not call something unclean if God has made them clean. The same vision was repeated three times. Then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. In scripture, many times we'll see the words, in, especially in the King James Version, I don't know, I can't think of some of the other versions right now, but the King James Version, or the New King James Version, you'll see the term used, verily, verily. And it puts an intensity on what it's saying. Jesus used to say, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you. And it's something that he wants us to bring attention, something that's very important. And here, Peter sees this dream a number of times. I know in my life, sometimes what will happen with me is that I will read something and I'll get an impression on something and then someone will come to me and they'll say that same thing and I may hear it even a third time and go, oh, God wants to either confirm a direction for me or he wants to correct something in my life. And so it's important. Now God is coming to Peter and he's coming to Peter and if something has to change, wait a minute, Peter, he was one of the the 12 disciples. He was with Jesus. He went through the, the, the upper room where the Holy Spirit fell on him. He spoke in other tongues. He was one of those guys there. We just saw in, in the last chapter that he healed people. What could be wrong with Peter? Peter was stuck in the law that was supposed to serve us our sins, but he wasn't, still wasn't clearly listening to God. And Peter, God was telling Peter in this thing, I trump everything. There's something you're missing, Peter. There's a change that you need to make. The, the funny thing about this is that, that Peter said he would never eat anything at all that, that the law called unclean. Yet, Peter was living with a Jewish person that was unclean by nature of the law. After he had done his last healing, he was living in, a, in, in, a, in an area of Jerusalem, but he was living in the house of a tanner, and because of the works of the tanner, tanners are people who killed animals. Because of the blood, they skid them, and they, they made leather works and other things from those the, the skins of animals and dry them out, but the very handling of that was an unclean thing according to the law. And Peter was all up in that house, hanging out with the tanner. So he was keeping a portion of what he saw was the law, but he wasn't keeping the whole law, which made him even in sin at that point in time, if you really think about it. So Peter invites these guys in. He has them spend the night. And you know, i tell you why. I was thinking, why did he have to spend the night? Well, the distance between where, between where he was at and, and Joppa was about 34 miles. I figured out if you don't know how, it went, how long it takes to walk 34 miles, anywhere between 7 and a half and 10 hours. So those guys were tired. Now they had to go back the next day, and they had to go and, and be with Cornelius. So let's go on. In verse 17, it says, 